who is a veteran? Who is specifically a California veteran? Well, first of all, a veteran, as I remember the story about DMV, you know, veterans themselves aren't sure if they're a veteran or not. The easy, straightforward, well, the, the not so easy answer is it depends. It depends on which benefit we're talking about. But the straightforward answer that covers all the bases is a veteran is anybody who served in the armed forces of the United States for any length of time. If the person, when they were leaving the service, went to the out-processing place and a, uh, a, a uh, administrator, a clerk of some sort, typed up this form or printed out a form called a Department of Defense Form DD-214. It is the document that proves that somebody had served in the Armed Forces of the United States and it is kind of like the ticket to ride for a veteran. Okay. Now, the waters get muddy with, well, what kind of benefits is the veteran entitled to? It does at times depend on how long they served, what type of discharge they received, uh, and, and so again we are at the simply talking with the veteran, identifying that they are a veteran, figuring out uh, some of the needs they may have and getting them onto those pathways. So we're not going to concern ourselves here at the library volunteer level as to exactly which benefits. We're going to present all of the ones they're interested in to them. And then those providers of those services will be the gatekeepers. Okay, they'll be the ones who say, well, you know, you're, you're supposed to have this many months of active duty service, at least in, in uh, total if you were in, say, the reserves or the guard. Or your discharge is um, a general discharge. It might be less than honorable. Perhaps you ran afoul with some sort of issues uh, during your military service. Those sorts of problems need to be addressed outside of your library volunteer service. A veteran can petition the U.S. government to change the character of their discharge. So if they had what I've heard some old veterans groups call the bad chicken dinner. Anybody else hear that before? The BCD, bad conduct discharge. It is entirely possible to get that upgraded to make it something that is uh, general under honorable conditions or even an honorable discharge. Okay, and that opens up a lot more doors for the veteran. So I do want you to just take note of that one little item to help differentiate because that could be, at least in the veteran's eyes, a showstopper if you don't have, again, a little bit of knowledge about a lot of things and that's a little bit about the discharge of the veteran. Okay, and here is one. It's not an eye test. It's already kind of out of focus. I just wanted you to know that, as she just pointed out, everyone is a little bit different anyway. It will somewhere on the form say DD-214. You know, sometimes it's up here, sometimes it's down here, sometimes it's over here. Uh, but they are all treated the same by the U.S. government and therefore by anybody who is providing benefits to the veteran. They will somewhere identify the veteran completely, usually up in this part. They will identify the veteran's military affiliation in this part. And this part is almost always similar if not the same and that is the, um, the length of service the veteran served in. And down here is generally uh, more of a free text what the veteran uh, did in his various tours of duty, what sort of uh, awards the veteran may have earned. All of those things are going to be important to some of the service providers downstream on those pathways that you point the veteran to. But it's really important that the veteran either has this or figures out how to get it most veterans actually know where a copy of their DD-214 is. They might not have it with them, but they're like, eh, it's in that box in my garage, or it's in my attic, or, you know, it's at my mom's house. Definitely don't have to have it before you help them. And that's why, that's why I want to discuss uh, this, this with you, which is how do we help the veteran get the DD-214, okay? This might be the biggest um, administrative charge that you guys will have. Because we're not going to ask you to help the veteran to upgrade their discharge. We're not going to ask you to um, uh, develop a, a disability or pension claim for the veteran. None of that stuff. Okay, But we will ask you, uh, as you are able, to point the veteran onto the internet. And this obviously is in your slides already, uh, notes. But um, we can also make sure that we bookmark some of these critical uh, web pages on the library computer. So if you have Korean War 
World War II veterans. Fortunately, we still have a good number of them among us. Uh, they will have a different form number. W, D, A, G, O, form 5355. Biggest thing I want you guys to remember from this discussion is this acronym. Okay, and that's why our CVSO representative brought this up. Okay, the County Veterans Service Office will always have the method needed for the tricky things. Okay, records are maintained electronically, and in some cases, I um, mean, it's like a um, what did we call that microfiche from long ago. Um, however, you will also uncover a demographic by um, time in service between, uh, is it post-Korean War, throughout the Vietnam War, or maybe it's between World War II and Vietnam. There was a huge records fire in a warehouse in St. Louis, I think it was, and it destroyed tens of thousands of veteran records. There is simply no record of their service anymore, and that's a difficult pill to swallow, but the federal government has put in place procedures to help a veteran in that condition out. And guess who knows all about how to help them with that? The County Veteran Service Office. Okay, Very important that we don't, again, I don't want you to get too deep. I want you to know that for some veterans that are in the more senior group, they might have this form instead. I want you to know that um, there is a way for them to get a DD-214. And I think this is straightforward enough to help them with right here in the library site. Okay, And that's why we included this particular uh, online link, web page, okay? Uh, invite the veteran to go with the team they're comfortable with, okay? We certainly want to try to direct them in many cases to the county because number one, it's very accessible. It's, it's in their neighborhood nearby. Um, but beyond that, if they're already a member of one of these other organizations or they're thinking about joining them because they have that affiliation, let's have them talk to those guys as well. We want the veteran to become kind of their own search agents over time. But you guys get to help them initially with that. Is there are nearly two million veterans throughout the state. And that is almost 10% of the entire nation's veterans. And the vast majority are male veterans. A uh, growing number are female veterans, 8%, and that grows at this point annually, of course. Um, as, as more and more females are, are allowed into greater um, specialties within all the service branches. That entices more females to join the military, to do what they really want to do. Almost two million California veterans, uh, just over 10% of them, 12 to 13%, have what's called a service-connected disability. And that was that thing that we had mentioned before, where they get, uh, they get through a process with the USDVA, the Fed, who determines that, yes, part of your, part of your health issues to a certain percentage after you are examined and medical records are obtained and reviewed, is determined to have been because of your service for your country in the military, okay? 87 to 88% of all the veterans in our state don't have a service-connected disability. Now, do you, do you think that 87 to 88, almost 90% of all the veterans in this state have nothing wrong with their health that can be possibly attributed even a little bit to their service in the military? Not very likely. When you serve in the military, for those of you that serve in the military and those of you that have family members or friends, uh, there are many physically demanding tasks that happen uh, in conjunction with your service. Uh, you do very unusual things compared to uh, a worker that goes to an office and, and, uh, and, and maybe sits in a desk environment. Uh, just by nature of where you had to go in the military, oftentimes will relate to uh, physical, medical conditions that you may have, okay? So when it's 87% of them that don't have any sort of service-connected medical disability, and I mean even just something teeny tiny, uh, that actually portends that they simply haven't gone and done that yet with the USDVA. They have not been identified as a service-connected, uh, disabled, even a small percentage veteran. We seek to improve on that number, okay? And it's a bit of a report card. 
in the veteran services world. It's a very straightforward way to say with fair to high confidence, hey, your veterans in your state are getting it. They're getting the word and they're getting the things that they earned. Okay, so we seek to improve that number. That is like a report card grade. We are not the number one state. They generally go, in, in the aforementioned, they go to states where it's, it's comfortable to live. California, Arizona, Texas, Florida. Um, but they also go where they know uh, they have a good support network. There are, there are healthy benefits available to them. And that's, once again, our job here is to try to help as many veterans as we can discover that there are a myriad of benefits that they can take advantage of in this state as a kind of a piling on of federal benefits coupled with state and, and local benefits as well. We have a big challenge to help all these veterans. Uh, and, I, and remember, I already talked about the 18, 24-year-old group. They are the ones that don't know what to do yet. They come back home. They don't have a job. They don't have a lot of school completed beyond high school yet, many of them. So they may go a couple major pathways from here. They may go to the job market. They may go to school first. Either way, um, it's, not, it's not super straightforward to get them there from the start. They may have housing issues. Some veterans that are not coming back here to live in California uh, because they have family that they can live with, they come here and they don't have a place to live. And that certainly can be a daunting experience because we know that uh, houses are not the cheapest in the state of California either to buy or to rent. Some veterans, unfortunately, and many of, several of you in the, in the panel here today are experts in this, have issues with substance abuse, substance abuse and or behavioral health problems uh, do qu quite clinically connected to their time in the service. So certainly we don't want to turn our backs on them. We need to find good avenues for them to succeed in uh, care and um, improvement in their condition. Uh, we have a lot of veterans with quite a few of them with multiple challenges and our number one issue with making this connection happen is finding those veterans in the first place. That's why we're here. That's why we try all these different avenues to where we know people as a whole congregate and certainly brilliant idea that wasn't mine to use the libraries as an avenue for that. Okay, so finding, identifying the majority of California veterans, we need to branch out, like in the branch libraries. Uh, again, we talked about these, some of these before. A lot of them, they might not even know they're a veteran, okay, to the true sense of the word, and then they certainly don't know uh, that they have any or many of these benefits uh, that they have earned that they just haven't found yet. And uh, how to navigate them, because there are so many good intended groups that are out there, sometimes it gets a little noisy. You guys may have experienced this with, with yourselves or with a loved one. Um, there are so many groups that are trying to help. It's hard to kind of keep track of them. And uh, if you ever go on the web, like I said, go type veterans into a, a web search engine, and you'll see just hundreds of sites. And most of them have uh, like red, white, and blue bunting on them. You know, most of them have a silhouette of a veteran, uh, a, a soldier perhaps uh, carrying another one on his back. Or I think you've all seen them, right? In, in incredible volume of these sites. So most of which are very well intended and indeed do what they say they do. It's just difficult to sort through them all and figure out which one is most appropriate. Okay, so it's noisy out there. Navigating them, difficult. All right, uh, two million, almost two million veterans. Uh, just as many deployments. Deployment means, meaning pack your bags, you're going overseas, you're uh, fighting for your country. In, in one of our service branches. And those put a strain certainly on the, on the veteran themselves, the service member themselves, but then uh, the family that they leave behind as well.